Hi, this is Donnie Coram with the Integrity Team at Keller Williams. And this is our Ask a Realtor segment, a weekly segment we put on for all those questions you had to ask your real estate agent about the proper way to buy and sell a home here and around the Colorado Springs area. Today is our inspector edition, so we've brought in our top-notch home inspector, Mr. Dan Perillo. Dan, welcome. Awesome. Good to see you. Good, Good to see, see you, Donnie. So Dan has been an inspector for how long now? 13 years. 13 years in the business. So obviously you've seen pretty much everything there is to see related to inspection. What catches you off guard now? What, what does surprise you? Uh, what surprises me now is um, a lot of the DYI projects that, that sellers start in their house and do not finish. <laughs> so we see that a lot on the listing side of it. So you know when you start a project and you can't finish it, the problem with that is obviously that's not going to pass inspection, right Dan? So yes. what's the general remedy for that situation? You have to generally recommend, obviously they fix it, but there's permits involved. What do you recommend a homeowner, the new homeowner does in that case? Yeah, that, um, what, what you have to do actually is um, work with the agent to see what they can actually get done and completed prior to closing. That's the most important thing to do. And is that project something that actually needs to be finished or is that something the actual buyer can actually pick up and run with and, and change it to, for, to their liking? So that's one of the things that I would recommend, but um, it depends on the project itself and uh, the condition of what it's in when you're gonna go and buy the house. Sure, sure. So a lot of people are buying houses, obviously with the integrity team right now, Dan, uh, it's kind of asking a barber how's a haircut, but why yeah. is it super important for the consumer to get a home inspection done in the purchase process? Well, that's actually a great question. Um, uh, one of the things that bothers me the most is that people will skip out on a home inspection. And that's uh, something that they just really shouldn't do. The reason being a home inspection is a snapshot of the house um, at that current condition when you're buying the property. And what we do in that is we actually look at all the health and safety issues and then we go into the mechanical issues with the house. And just to make sure um, that you are actually buying a safe uh, mechanical uh, issue free home um, that you can have. And then we also teach them how to work with all the uh, appliances and things and how to actually operate the house and what to look forward to and look for uh, for some potential problems down the road. Excellent. This is a very short show, guys, but the essence of it is we want you to ask all the questions you've wanted to ask a home inspector or a realtor today. So please chime in while we're chatting here. Ask all the questions you want to know. Listen, the information is out there, but sometimes without a, a professional contact like Mr. Perillo available to you, might be some stuff you go unanswered. So we want to kind of bridge that gap for you. We have a lot of devout watchers of our videos who have said they've had questions related to home inspection. So please chime in here. I've got my phone out so I can uh, basically look down occasionally as the questions come in and answer them. But Dan, you mentioned it's super important to get a home inspection, but how does a home inspection compare with say getting a, a home warranty? Sure. Um, a home inspection actually identifies any problems or issues um, that you might have in the house. A home warranty will actually cover the appliances and things after the home inspection is done. So say for instance we uh, looked at a furnace and we rated that either fair or satisfactory, then your actual warranty would kick in. So then later on down the road, um, if something happens to the uh, furnace or, or, or dishwasher, it's going to be covered under your warranty. Sure, so sure. that's why we have to actually know the condition prior before the actual warranty company will even accept it. That makes sense. So the inspection actually is what gets you to the warranty. Yes, sir. So you're recommending doing both in most cases. Right. I would highly recommend that because one of the misconceptions that people have with a home inspection is that um, once you buy a house, nothing breaks. Um, but you've got to realize that people actually live in the house 30 to 40, even up to 60 days prior to closing and things break. Um, yeah. So that's what's so important to have a warranty so that when you go to the, um, the closing and you do your final walkthrough, then you can really see, is this the home that I'm actually buying and is it in the same condition it was when it was inspected? Makes sense, makes total sense. Well, we got our first question. Um, why do I need a home inspection if my mortgage lender is requiring an appraisal anyway? Well, that's another big misconception. They think an appraisal is a home inspection. Uh, an appraisal is not. What an appraisal is, is it actually dictates the value of the house, but it does not look at the health and safety issues as a home inspection would. So um, there's the biggest difference. So a home inspection is super, super important as far as um, what is wrong with the house, foundation issues, roof issues, things like that. Yes, the appraisal might catch a few, but there's so many of them that they don't have any responsibility to even document. Yeah, and bring it up, I'm, all, I'm an appraiser as well as a real estate agent, and it's important to know that the appraisal's design is to protect the, the bank. Right. right, the yes. bank's best interest to make sure the house is financially soluble. Right. Your job is to protect the homeowner, right. help them understand that the product they're buying is going to serve their family for years to come yes. with less problems. So there is a big gap between the purpose of the appraisal versus the purpose of the home inspection. Yes, that is correct. All right, um, next question. I've taken great care of my home. Everything is up to date, and I know there are no issues. Why am I being told to get a home inspection? Um, 
that's a great question because normally what that would pertain to is maybe a pre-inspection for a buyer. Um, but once again, people are very prideful and they don't understand all the things to look for in their house. They might take good care of it. They might um, do a lot of warranty work on their on their appliances and furnaces and water heaters, but they don't get to see the entire picture with with negative or neutral eyes mm -hmm. as a home inspector would. So that's what's so important just to get the home inspection and. A home inspection report is actually a legal document that will actually protect the buyer um, once they get into the contract. Makes sense, makes sense. So the home inspection is complete. Um, you come up with some line items that are super important. What's the, I mean, the recommendation is we do an inspection resolution, right? So the inspection yes. objection is the first round of it, and that allows us to define what issues need to be resolved before we close. The next document that comes out is the inspection resolution. That's the document where based on the recommendation from the objection, the buyer and seller get together and decide what and what things need to be fixed. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that everything that comes back on the inspection needs to be fixed right away. I mean, how do you really rate the important items, Dan, versus the things that can wait for down the road? Right, what we normally call those are the Home Depot issues, um, little small things that might be on the inspection objections that really isn't um, something that's that important, um, but, it, but, but it could also be important to the buyer anyway. Sure. So the most important thing to do is to look at the major issues, the health and safety issues in the home, uh, more to pertaining to permitting and, and whether things are installed uh, properly. Perfect example is carbon monoxide that leaks into the home. Well, if you had um, Uncle Bob, say for instance, install a water heater and it wasn't installed correctly, you have a potential for carbon monoxide leak into the home, which can kill you. Yeah. Um, so that's why you want to do a home inspection and also have those, uh, those type of things permitted by Pikes Peak Regional Building Department. That protects everyone so that the install is correct and it is not a safety issue. So this is a really good question. Um, what are the things you're looking for in the inspection? Like what, what items do you touch? And I know it's a fairly comprehensive list, sure. but I guess what a better, better question might be, what things do you not address in an inspection? Right, um, what's, what's amazing by having the experience that I have, um, you're already focused on when you walk into a property, what to look for. There's the typical things where you've got electrical issues, you've got foundation issues, you might have some plumbing issues, but more important, found, uh, foundation and, and uh, drainage issues. Those are the things that we look for because those are the things that can really have an effect on your house. Um, chipped paint and things like that is something that we really don't pay attention to unless there's a reason for it, if there's a cause that has an underlying uh, deeper issue. That makes sense. Um, what's the cost of the inspection generally and who pays for that, the buyer or the seller in your experience? Right. Uh, most of the time it's the buyer that will pay for the inspection when it's on the buyer's end. We do have uh, pre-listing inspections where the seller will actually pay, pay for that. And the inspection can range anywhere from 250 to $400 depending on the square footage of the home and if there's a radon test included um, with the home inspection. Okay, all right. So is it it's square footage driven? Yes, it is. It's square footage driven as far as what the price would be based off um, the square footage of the house. So what's the top end, I mean, in your experience? What's the well, highest an inspection yeah, should run? I know um, it's tough to say, but. Yes, um, well, I've uh, the biggest home I inspected was 8,300 square feet, and, and that would run up in the $500 range. But everything uh, is negotiable as far as the inspection fee, um, but we also have a minimum. And we'll do homes anywhere from 500 square feet all the way up to 8,300 square foot. Sure, sure. So it's important to get a professional home inspector, guys. And the thing about it is, is there's no licensure for home inspectors, right? Yeah, that's one of the disappointments. Um, I wish Colorado would go to the licensing program so that um, we have uh, real educated inspectors out there because what we don't want to have in the inspection field is an opinion. Opinions <laughs> do not matter. Um, <laughs> it's either broke and it needs to be fixed or it's a health or safety issue. So we don't want people going out there with recommendations. Um, that's not what we're here for. And I love that. I, and I want to point out because there's no licensure, it's so important to find an inspector you can trust that can count on to get a thorough inspection without blowing up the deal. And that's one thing uh, Mr. Perillo is a great, does a great job of um, is getting you the absolute knowledge of what's wrong with the property without scaring you off. Listen, if it's a bad deal, if the house is a bad house, you certainly don't want to buy it. But our goal is to help you to purchase a home and then get it inspected by a professional who can give you the pitfalls right up front. If there's just some things that can't be fixed or it's a bad house, you're going to tell them that, right, Dan? Absolutely. Um, and unfortunately, this year we've had several. And uh, with, with some of the new laws pertaining to uh, marijuana and things like that, we've uh, ran into a lot of grow houses this year mm -hmm. and the consequences of what those are in an inspection. Um, so those are very, very important features to come across, and that's why it's important to get a home inspection. Um, when people um, do something to their electrical and they change uh, the currents in the distribution panel, they don't realize the effect on the total home. That's why you have to look at a, a distribution panel and things like that to make sure that it's safe. 
So what's an ultimate deal breaker when it comes to inspections? Like, is there just, is there absolute one thing you would look at when you just tell a buyer, there's no way you should buy this house and walk away? What, what's the, what makes a home inhabitable? Oh, that's great. Um, most of the time that we'll see, there, anything can be fixed. There's always a dollar amount on what can be fixed. But one of the things that could be a potential deal breaker are the things that are unseen. Um, most of those are structural issues, foundation issues that can run into thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. When you walk down into the basement and you see that the doors are actually crooked, or you see a big lump in the, in the uh, floor, the, base, the basement slab, or you see cracked drywall, that is a telltale sign that you have significant foundation issues. Sure. And those are the things that you want to um, potentially um, walk away with. But it's still important to get the, the inspection done. Why? Because if you actually put the offer on the house and it's in, in the inspection phase, we want to see how severe that problem is. It could be something very small, uh, can be fixed for uh, a lot less money, or it can be a very significant issue where you would have to walk away. Sure, sure. And in the cases where you walk away, that's the beauty of the inspections. You have an inspection period. So you're not buying a whole home sight unseen. When you go under contract on a property, we have a deadline that allows you to have a gap between the time we're under contract and the time to get Dan out there to do the inspection on the property. So during that time, we're doing our due diligence, if you were. And if the house is just not a good deal, you're not at risk. Your earnest money will be returned to you 100%. So you're not going to lose money on putting a house under contract and giving up earnest money if the reason we get out is because of the inspection period. And that's why you want a top-notch inspector like Dan looking at the house quickly. What's generally your turnaround time from the date of order to the date of inspection? I know you're super busy right now, but what's your general guideline for that? Right. Uh, great question. Um, I get people in uh, whenever they need it. And the reason being is I don't ever overbook myself. Um, it's so important to be uh, customer focused to say, hey, Dan, if I need an inspection, can you get me in this week? We will fit you in. It's that important because we understand the timelines um, for inspections and stuff like that. So. Um, call anytime. You can always get a uh, hold of me and get and I can get you in to get a home inspection. Absolutely. Well, that's always been the case. And what I love working with you, Dan, because it's always been the case. And we need you to kind of be Johnny on the spot for you. You certainly are. But we always get a comprehensive inspection. The buyers are happy with the results. And listen, if it's not a good deal, we want to make sure we're protecting our consumer. That's what the inspection process is all about. We're going to do one more question, I think. Um, I just bought my home but plan on selling in the future. What is the most common problem you find when inspecting homes? That's a great question. One of the most common things we find is drainage issues. Um, people don't understand how important a small gutter leak or a clogged gutter can turn into thousands of dollars down the road. So um, the, the actual gutters and things like that that um, have issues are drainage. So you always want to look for proper drainage, move the water away from your house, four feet away from the foundation. That's super, super important. So if you're going to do anything to your backyard or re-landscape it, always keep drainage in mind because that is the number one thing that we find wrong with homes, whether it's a, a clogged or moved gutter or a gutter that's actually clogged that runs underground and you don't know it. Um, is that's the biggest thing that we see is actually drainage issues. Oh, very interesting. Um, and it, well, quite poignant with all the weather we've been getting lately. Obviously, inspecting in this yeah. weather can't be fun for you. No, it's not. And that's uh, one of the things that we've had this summer. We've had so much rain. So crawl spaces being flooded, basements being flooded. Um, it's all part of the business. Mm -hmm. So last question here. What's the craziest thing you've ran into in an inspection? I bet you've seen some doozies over 13 years. <laughs> the craziest thing I ever saw in an inspection was literally a house that was actually falling down. Um, and that's one of the things that we want to partner with with realtors on is, is we want to make sure that we don't get to the inspection phase prior to. So being connected with realtors um, and, your, and your, your group, Donnie, is so important just to uh, educate them prior to going to the inspection so they can see what to look for prior to writing that offer. Because one of the things that I don't like to do is show up at a house and there's so many things wrong with it. Um, but under this market conditions, people have to write offers very, very quickly. Yes. And sometimes they don't get a chance to really get a good look at the property trying to make, you know, prior to, prior to putting in that offer. So it's real important that um, we partner together to make sure that we can look at some of the big things um, so that we don't have to have our clients spend the money on a home inspection and end up walking away. Sure. I love that. Well, Dan, I want to thank you for coming out. Yes, I really sir. appreciate it. This has been an awesome segment. And guys, listen, the fact of the matter is, if you're going to buy or sell a home in the Colorado Springs area, you want a top-notch team of professionals. The reality is, with 4,000 licensed agents here in the Colorado Springs area, the average agent is selling about four houses per year, and generally does not work with top-notch professionals like Dan. Listen, I can't kid you. There are less expensive inspectors out there, but we only work with the best because we pride ourselves in getting the best results for our clientele, and you want to put our services to work for you and make sure you get the best results. So to do so, you can get in touch with Integrity Home Inspections. What's a great contact number for you, Dan, if people want to call, reach out to you? Sure. We have a, a really nice website, and the mobile number is 719-761-8540. And a real easy website is myintegrityhomeinspector.com. Very simple. 
And listen, I only get you too inundated with calls, but I will tell you, anytime I've called Dan about a, uh, a house-related issue, he always has the answer. So if you need some assistance with that, feel free yes. to reach out. And if you're looking to get a professional inspection done by a top-notch professional inspector, Dan Frillo is definitely who the Integrity Team recommends and works with exclusively. With that, this is Donnie Coram with the Integrity Team at Keller Williams and Dan Perillo of Integrity Home Inspections. No relation. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We are the future of real estate.